back with chapter 21 today and in the chapter yesterday ash was feeling really pleased because he think he thinks that he's discovered that every time he gets something right a star lights up in the sky and that luna is gonna help him as a navigator and um help him figure it out so chapter 21 the hunt the frost heart had come to a standstill for the time since they left the fear of stronghold hunters descended down ropes that hung from the slave's sides eager to waste as little time as possible everyone knows that if you stay still for too long in the wilds you become lunch ash was the last to land on the snow before the slave's engine roared back into life blasting the hunting party with snow as it soared off across the plain the frost heart was to make large circles around the area trying to lure the Leviathans away from the hunt They'd come back in a few hours to pick up the hunters and hopefully their bountiful quarry. This did not st- stop Ash from feeling like they'd been abandoned. He focused on the hunting party around him and gripped his bow to try to feel less exposed. A song weaver could prove useful on the hunt, Shard had argued after Captain Nook had confirmed that their supplies were running out faster than predicted and that the crew would need to make an emergency stop to hunt for much needed food. Absolutely not, Toby would have said. The boy is not ready. So little faith in your own student, Shard had smiled his wolfish grin as he attached a strange archaeomech gadget to his belt. We might need Ash's powers if we get any unwanted attention out there. Nook had had a think. What say you, Ash? Mind keeping the hunters safe for me? Ash had gulped. He knew he wasn't ready. The faces of the crew who had volunteered to hunt had told him they felt the same way. But Shard was right. What was all his training for if he wasn't going to use his skills? I've sent a swarm of hurtlers away before, and I can do it again, he had assured himself. He nodded at Nook, nerves prickling the back of his neck. We're better without him. We've done this well before without the help of a warbling child, Caelan had snarled. Caelan's right, Cobb pitched in, but in a friendlier tone. I like the boy, but that doesn't change what he is. What if the levy then overwhelm him, get their claws into his mind? Oh gosh, turn my screen off. Captain Nook pondered these words. All of your opinions have been duly noted. Ash, do please prove them all wrong. She had smiled at Ash, who smiled back, not sure whether he should thank or curse her for believing in him. Standing out here on the plain, the frost heart growing smaller in the distance, he suspected he had the answer. Now the hunters made their way to a large outcropping of towering rocks, clustered like fingers at the bottom of a large hill. The crew had spotted numerous crows circling the area, which suggested there was a good chance they'd find game. It didn't feel like a good sign to Ash, though. He was beginning to feel like the crows were watching him. Caelan, the appointed leader of the hunt, looked to the others, who shifted with an ease. Split into groups, she signed. Cover more ground. Sooner find prey, sooner leave snow. Ash knew silence meant survival out in the wilds. If a hunter made a sound, there was a good chance they'd just become the hunted. Uh, As such, most human kin knew sign language to use outside sleigh and walls. It had been a main topic in Lightbringer Hayes' lessons, although Ash wasn't as confident in its use as the adults. He could mostly understand what was being said. He particularly liked the leave snow part. Ash, with Tobu and Shard, Caelan signed. Head east, rest of us, head west. Ash watched as the other hunters stalked off, silent as snow. A hand came to, the, to rest on his shoulder, giving it a gentle squeeze. He turned to see Shard, who gave him a reassuring smile. Ash smiled back and balled his hands into fists. This is my chance to show the crew that I'm not dangerous, that I can be valuable to them. I know I can keep everyone safe and I'll do everything I can to make that happen, he thought to himself. Before long, they attracted a small herd of the Ulk, who were busy using their shovel-like antlers to dig through the snow in search of food. They were gathered within a large clearing bordered by tall, steep rocks upon which a dozen crows perched, their beady eyes watching carefully. Too far, Tobu signed, dropping the snow hairs he'd somehow already managed to catch and reaching for his bow. Be patient, I'll drive towards you. We'll wait, Shard signed back. Tobu crouched low, ready to sneak into position. He hesitated, then looked back at Ash with stern eyes. Be careful. I will, Ash assured him. Do not sing. Not ready yet, Tobu added. Ash frowned at this. Tobu pointed a finger at him, and Ash could do nothing but hold his hands up in submission. Apparently satisfied, Tobu nodded and headed round the Ulk to cut off their escape. Ash and Shard took cover behind some bushes and waited. All was very quiet. Ash's senses were on full alert, straining to find any hidden danger. 
Then he started as Shard tapped him on the shoulder. Don't listen to Tobu, he signalled. Do what is necessary. Be brave. Ash smiled back and nodded. He was glad to have at least one person on his side. He sensed movement ahead, but to his relief saw it was the rest of the hunting party. They clearly tracked the same ulk and were moving swiftly, swiftly to encircle them, using the scattered bushes as cover. One of the hunters, Yala, it looked like, raised her bow and took careful aim. A crow cried out and the others quickly joined in. What spooked them? Ash wondered, knocking an arrow to his bow. An ulk raised its head in alarm, its ears pricked and its nose twitching, scenting a change in the air. The others followed suit. Suddenly the crows dived from their rock perches, flocking and flying in the ulk, flapping their large wings in their faces and cawing and crying in raucous chorus. What is up with these crows? Ash thought in disbelief. The ulk bolted. He could see Caelan signalling for the party to fall back. Yala did not see. And then, swoom! Yala disappeared in an eruption of snow. Ash let out a gasp and Shard reached for his belt. As the snow cleared, Ash could see the terrible serpentine shape of a lurker clawing at the rock that Yala had managed to leap up on just in time. It had been lying in wait, lured to attack by the commotion above. Yala had dropped her bow, her arm twisted into a shape that looked anything but natural. The other hunters were too far away to help. Kill. Hunt. Destroy. The creature's terrible song punched through the silence, making Ash grimace as it filled his head. His mind raced. I can't do nothing. I have to help her. Now, Ash. Now's the time, Shard shouted, confirming Ash's intentions. Ash took a deep breath. He swallowed his nerves. It was one lurker. He could do this. He had to prove himself. And what better way than by saving Yala's life? Ash began to sing. His starlight aura billowed outwards and met the raging tendrils of the lurker's aura with what felt like a physical shudder. He shaped and formed his melody to fit that of the lurker's to try to find the cracks within its aura like he had with the hurtlers back at the fear of stronghold. Peace, calm, friends. But this time, before his song could have any effect, the lurker's blood-red tendrils wrapped themselves round his aura, forcing it down and wringing the life from it. Ash's eyes widened with horrified surprise. He'd managed to calm three hurtlers at once before. Why was this lurker so powerful? Ash felt like he was being choked. The lurker's aura clawed its way down Ash's and the Leviathan itself raced closer and closer towards him. Caught. Weak. Mine. His head was filled with the furious screams and violence of the lurker's song, to the point where he felt like his skull was going to spit open. The lurker was beating him. Was it about to take over his mind? Ash's song wriggled and struggled, but to no avail. The lurker had him, and Ash realised it wasn't because it was too strong, but because he was too weak. The last time he'd song woven, he'd unleashed the power he'd been bottling up all his life. With that surge of power gone, Ash felt his reserves considerably lacking, and he couldn't seem to find the strength to fight back. His aura flick, flickered and faded, and without Ash to calm the lurker, the whole hunting party was in danger. They wouldn't be able to escape. Then, with a terrible jolt, Ash was freed from the lurker's invading song as Tobu threw him to the side, breaking him from his song trance. The yeti deftly spun round in the same motion to fire an arrow at the fast-approaching Nevithan, but before he could make the shot, there was a huge explosion of blinding amber light, and arms of crackling lightning arced across the clearing. Ash and Toby watched, stunned, as the smoke cleared, revealing the shattered, frozen body of a dead lurker in its wake, veins of lightning fizzing round its form. Shard held a smoking archaeomech weapon in his outstretched hand, sunstone shards protruding from, his t from its top, glowing wall-like patterns appearing along its surface. A hungry grin was carved into his face. Fool, Tobu growled. The noise of such thing will bring all the other lurkers upon us. They were already on their way, Shard said, picking a trembling ash up off the ground. And it worked, didn't it? We're not all blessed with super, ye super yeti abilities. Some of us have to adapt to survive in the wilds. To the high ground, came Kalen's voice before Tobu could argue any more. The other hunters were climbing up a steep pinnacle of rock, helping a grimacing yalla. Ash could see a swarm of lurkers scrambling towards them with ferocious speed, fangs bared and jaws salivating. Time to move, I'd suggest, Shard said. All three of them ran for the pinnacle, joining the others as they clambered up the rock face. As they climbed, one of Ash's hands slipped and he swung round wildly, barely hanging onto the surface with his other hand, the lurkers already snapping at him 
at him mere feet below. He felt weightless for a moment as the world spun round him. Then he felt a yank as Tobu hefted him up to safety. Although, from the look of anger in Tobu's eyes, Ash wasn't so sure this was the safer place to be. The hunters huddled together on top of the high rock like the frightened herd of Ulk they had been hunting, nostrils flaring and breath frantic. They could do nothing but wait. The frost heart would never make it in among the rocks, and they were going nowhere with these lurkers snapping at their feet. Ash's body felt heavy all of a sudden. Song weaving really took it out of him. Hey, what are you doing? Keelan called out to Shard, the hunter who was closest to the edge. Shard leaned over for a better view of the snapping lurkers and their dead companion. He wore a proud, crooked smile. I knew I should have bought some extra rounds. He laughed to the uncomfortable silence of the others. Do you think they've gone? Cobb cautiously whispered after what felt like a long, long time. Mother Sun had disappeared below the horizon. The lurkers were nowhere to be seen, but still the other hunters dared not answer. Why don't you go down and see? Shard replied finally. There was an uneasy laugh from the group, but no one moved. The hunters shivered, almost buried under the snow that had been falling on them for the last few hours. A thin line of snot that had frozen into a green icicle dangled from Ash's nose, but he hadn't dared to move it and wipe it. To move and wipe it. Finally, Tobu stepped forward, shaking the snow from his fur like a dog. Picking up a stone, he threw it down to the snow below. It landed with a soft The world was still. Nothing, Tobu grunted. The party breathed a sigh of relief. Ash was in shock. This was just one trip, hunting trip out into the wilds, and it had been awful. He looked at his guardian with newfound awe. Tobu managed to walk from the world's spy mountains all the way to the fear of stronghold. That journey would have taken moons with countless hunts like this. For the first time, the true scale of this incredible feat dawned on Ash. Tobu told me not to sing, that I wasn't ready yet. His brain nagged, and it looks like he was right. Perhaps it was time, time to start listening to Tobu. Caw! A crow called, ominous and unseen, and almost in agreement. End of chapter 21.